so yeah, uh, as my fellow said, um, I'm from, well, they didn't actually say it, I'm from Slovenia. Um, you guys know where Slovenia is, hopefully. If you don't know, well, Google it. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of land in the heart of Europe. Two million people, like the whole country is just two million people, so small, diverse. Feel free to visit sometime. Uh, and the topic I would like to uh, talk to you about today is um, about communication. It's, it's about how usually the, the culprit of all problems in, in, in any kind of relationship is, is not what you know or what you don't know, um, but how you deal with the stuff, how you express it. Um, yeah, so who am I? Uh, as I said, I'm Tomaj Zaman. Um, that is my Twitter hashtag. Please follow me because I have a, an, an embarrassingly low number of followers. So, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm a father of four, uh, four small kids. Um, yeah, I'm a skydiver, jump out of perfectly working airplanes. Um, so, I won't have any references to that, but yeah, it's fun. You should try it sometime. Um, yeah, and I'm the founder of, of Codable. Um, as, as, um, what's your name? My name is Gareth. Oh, yeah, like Gareth said, um, my name is Nick. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I forgot because, because I sit in the back, so it's really hard to hear anything. Um, yeah, so the Codable, at Codable, we're all about, um, quality and, yeah, basically communication skills as well because we try to pair, uh, pair clients with, with developers and we actively seek out developers who are good communicators um, because according to our experience, uh, it's, it's the communication skill, uh, skills that matter, um, not so much their technical expertise because that's usually a granted thing, right? Um, by show of hands, who here uh, thinks of themselves as being a professional at what they do? Okay, come on, come on, <laughs> don't be shy. All right, yeah, so I can see here that, you know, all, all a bunch of great people. Um, so let me tell you a story. <coughs> <laughs> Whoever, who, who here thought, the, thought to themselves this in, on any professional occasion in the past? Wait, didn't you just say you're all a bunch of professionals here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, it happens to all of us, so yeah, on with my story. So there's this guy called, there was this guy called Tom. Um, he was working from 9 to 5 at a sucky job for a sucky project manager uh, for what seemed as a sucky client, uh, but, you know, soon he discovered that, you know, he's in misery and it wasn't actually the client's fault that they were sucky. It was actually the project manager uh, because she didn't have she didn't have any uh, communication or technical skills to begin with, uh, and so what what she did is you know she, have, she every month she just she would just look at the numbers and try to sell as much man hours as possible uh, without really knowing what solutions to sell or what the clients would need at that very point. Uh, yeah, so Tom decided to Tom decided to leave. Um, leave the company uh, and, and try to find his own clients. Um, by now I'm probably guessing you know that I'm talking about me. Um, and yeah, I had to put a, a stock photo up there because it annoys everyone. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I decided to look for, for a couple of clients. Um, and yeah, I, I was quite lucky to find you know, a bunch of clients really because demand for, for the development is up and I'm always amazed by my well, Slovenian peers uh, that are quite, quite often tell me that they're struggling you know, um, and, and I'm always amazed by that. I mean, they're web developers, you're on the web, you know, why thinking inside the box? It's, you know, borders is just something that people made up. The web doesn't have any borders, so don't be local, be global, uh, like the web is, of course. Um, yeah, but there was a problem um, because, because I, I, I did a few mistakes back then. Well, I still do, still do them sometimes, actually, uh, truth be told. So I over-promised, I under-delivered, and I was late all the fucking time. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, yeah, we all miss deadlines, don't we? So, um, yeah, and, and why was that? 
Um, well, the problem was that I just tried to secure too much clients, like always. Um, and why is that? Because I was afraid of, of running out of work. Uh, this is pretty much for any freelancer, this is the, 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 you know, the deepest corner of hell of not having any work. Um, so what did I do to kind of feel better or feel less guilty about it? Uh, well, I de decreased prices. I, I, I offered discounts, you know, to, to kind of be friends with my clients again. But yeah, it didn't work um, because, yeah, um, you know, when you work almost for free, you kind of lose the motivation and then you're just late again and then you just fall into this. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, you've been there, right? Uh, yeah, so throughout, throughout my career up until this point, I've kind of discovered there are four major, major um, points or issues of, of, of failure when it, comes to, when it comes to client work. Um, and here they are, I call them the fantastic four. So basically all the, all the kind of problems that spur out of client work are either missed deadlines, um, misaligned expectations, uh, poorly done solutions and, and of course personality issues. Um, so let's uh, talk about um, Mr. Miss Deadlines first. How many times when, when somebody would ask you, uh, hi dude, how are you? Or hi Nick, how are you? And you would always go, oh, I'm just so busy all the time. Did you say that at any point? <laughs> Did you say it a lot? Well, why are you so busy? You should really go see some, some of the world, do some skydiving, it's really awesome. Don't be that busy. You know what busy means? When you say you're busy, you're just pumping your ego, basically. Don't be so busy. I mean, if you, if I've done it as well, I still do it sometimes, because it's, so, it's, it's, it's just so good, you know, when somebody asks how you are, and you say, I'm busy, and they say like, wow, this guy is really cool. He's like, really busy, I mean, <laughs> Awesome! Yeah, but the point is that that's just pumping your ego and there's really nothing that you can have from that apart from your ego being boosted a bit. Don't be busy. Instead, yeah, it, zero benefits. Uh, so instead, admit to people what you're really doing. Um, admit what kind of problems you have. Uh, be honest to people. Um, in, in my experience, it's, it always yielded best results because either you say you're busy and you get cool or you say yeah well I have these problems and you're, you're, the people around you just start brainstorming asking you how can I help I, I know some people that can help so be honest with people don't be the busy guy really don't be the busy guy uh, but let's say let's say you really are busy let's say that is the fact that you really have you know plenty of work um, how can you how can you you know bring it to a, to a manageable level? Well, it's time for two minute eco economy 101 class. Um, so basically, uh, it's all about supply and demand. So if if there's plenty of demand um, and you're only one person, so you have a limited supply. So the only um, the only solution you can do is raise your prices. If you have too much work. If you have a lot of work and it just keeps coming in, just raise your prices. Don't be afraid of it. Raising prices in, in, in economy is pretty much the only solution you can do to kind of get to the, to, the, to the point where supply and demand meet. And don't be afraid. The world is in great demand of good developers. Everybody is looking for a good developer and you are probably selling your services too cheap. Don't, be, don't do that. Uh, make yourself a favor, uh, make the community a favor, raise your prices because it took me and I pr I'm pretty much sure that it took all of you years and years of refinement and experience and hard work to get to the professional level you are now. It's okay, raise your prices. Uh, but what if you still have more work? Um, how do you cope with that? You can't just indefinitely raise prices. Um, then I would give my second um, advice of the day, um, have a partner. That helped me immensely. Um, you know, lone wolf dies alone or 
how do you, you probably have some South African saying for, for you know, that alone kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I would definitely say, I would definitely say have a partner. Um, having a partner is not only good to cover your ass when you really need it to, it's, it's also good uh, to have a, third, a second set of eyes on things. Um, you have complementary skills probably, so, so yeah, definitely have a partner, don't work alone. Um, so onwards to the next, um, to the next um, problem in communication, and that is misaligned expectation. Um, who, whoever, who here uh, among you guys and girls and ladies um, ever got a reply from the client, this is not what we agreed on? <laughs> yeah, and that sucks, right? It sucks big time. It, 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 happened, it, happened, quite, it happened quite a lot uh, to me as well. And, well, there's pretty much only one solution that I came up with, but it's, I would say it's a really good one. Um, and that is draw. Just take pen and paper and draw stuff down because client, our clients are not as technical as we are. They're usually more visual beings. Um, so, so it's really easy when you speak to them to draw a bit of a mock-up, then take an hour, even if it's not billable, that's okay. Not every hour needs to be billable uh, because you'll thank yourself in the wrong run. Uh, and just draw stuff on the paper, then show it to the client. Because once they see that stuff and they approve it, well, you'll have a proof that you agreed on that and there's nothing they can do to persuade you otherwise. Um, and you'll also improve uh, UX experience, um, which should be the top skill for everybody, every one of us, uh, and information architectural skills as well. Um, so here's an example. This is my drawing. I was helping a friend with some side project he had the other day. Basically, you don't need to be Picasso. It's okay what you do, just a couple of boxes, for example, and how they relate to one another. Yeah. Um, and this is one example that we did uh, the other day when we were revamping our, our, um, our wireframes for, uh, for uh, sorry, our emails on Codable. And this is an example. Just draw your thoughts on the paper because it's easier, easier and then you don't have that mental burden of wanting to remember everything. And so yeah, be smart, draw. Uh, our next, our next um, culprit is um, our poorly done solutions. Um, I would love to say that I don't do that. Um, I think you would all agree, uh, but we all do it sometimes. Um, and it's usually not because of our technical skills or, or lack thereof. Um, it's because we're trying to rush, because we overpromised. probably, we didn't draw, we didn't dis discuss into details. Um, so the, cl the clients are, are kind of putting us in the corner by saying, yeah, we agreed on this, and they say some sentence that is so vague that, you know, nuclear reactor would fit into that description still. <laughs> uh, and, and, and you really don't have anything to say because they are right, because you agreed on a vague description and now they can extort you to death pretty much. <laughs> Uh, uh, so what, you, what you're trying to do is uh, you're just probably trying to rush things just to get out of that project, you know, just look, I'll just copy paste some, some code I found on, on some stack overflow or whatever and just, yeah, deliver and be done with it. Uh, the next, the next, um, the next pr not so much as a problem, the next cause that this, this happens is also because clients usually um, promise you some additional funds and you just, you know, ka and you don't really do your homework. Um, so you just promise them and that's pretty much it. So yeah, <laughs> do your homework. When you're estimating, when you're talking to, uh, to, to clients with, um, with on, on new projects, on new stuff, do your homework. Um, and you know what also makes, makes um, poorly written code or, or code done in haste? it produces a, a phenomenon called uh, technical debt. Who here knows what technical debt is? Okay, you know what, uh, I'll be, I'll be um, really descriptive. When you open a piece of code and there's a snippet that says to do, that's technical debt because the developer said to do, as in to be done sometime in the future, well, sometime in the future, my ass. It, 
usually doesn't really happen, and that to do just stays there forever, reminding you. That is technical debt, and the problem with technical debt is if, if you don't clear it fast enough, uh, it's usually someone else that's doing it and hating you for it, like really hating you for it, um, and it's more expensive because the person after you doesn't know what you were thinking at the time. Well, neither did you probably. Um, so it can be really expensive to get uh, to get rid of technical debt. Uh, yeah. So take your time. Um, yeah. And then the last one, the last one, uh, the last culprit are are just personality problems, um, which kind of drive down to um, cultural differences. I mean, are you offended if I say fuck? No? Shit? Okay, I can keep doing this, but... <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get my point. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's just um, where and how we were brought up, in what culture, uh, maybe even religion, and, and it, ca it happens. Uh, people, people don't get along just because they misunderstood uh, the, the meaning behind words because we're still communicated, uh, communicating online on Skype emails and that's just you know the words they don't really convey the, the feelings unless you put a smiley at the end of each sentence like I'm trying to do um, so yeah it comes down to, to, to personal differences um, and there's one tool that can really help us uh, help us fight the problems that occur from those personality differences and that's empathy um, but empathy also comes uh, with a huge problem. You can't really learn it. At, at least I don't think you can. Um, women are in advantage in this uh, in this area because I think they have empathy. Kind of, bo they're born with it. Um, but if you you can't really learn it, either you are empathetic or you're not. Um, so I would say the next the next uh, the next best thing is acceptance. Um, just. Practicing acceptance, just not being offended by work, um, and instead trying to put yourself in the shoes of the person you're speaking with. Well, not literally, just figuratively. Don't really try to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I think we could we could when we talk uh, to one another, the the first thing we should have in mind is acceptance, uh, accepting the fact that they come from from different backgrounds, different culture. Um, I mean, we do. Despite the fact that we try to advertise on Codable that that you know we have uh, plenty of satisfied clients, which we do, um, from time to time we also get some depressing hate emails. Um, I mean, it happens. Um, Mark, do you get some hate emails sometimes? Okay, thank you for. I'm not alone. Thank you. Uh, so so uh, yeah, and and it's 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 all about trying to understand if the person on the other side. Uh, basically and one more point I would like to make here is it's okay to fire a client that's I mean if all else fails if, if you can if you just can't find can't find a common ground it's perfectly also okay to say listen maybe it's time that we just separate go our separate ways because because it's it's really not working out uh, for either of us and yeah, it, it's kind of daunting at first firing a client. I was kind of shaking when I was waiting for my first phone call to fire a client. Um, yeah, but it, it, well, it doesn't get easy. It's always hard, but you should do it anyway. <laughs> uh, so, so the last, the last, um, to the last point of, 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 of my talk is, is about how the communication within teams go. And, and for that, I need to go back a bit uh, to our story earlier. Uh, when I found that when I found that Codable, uh, we started developing this platform that we now have our third version online, I think. Um, and at some point, me, me and my my partner pair had a really big argument because things were not just either moving fast enough or in in the right direction. Um, so we were kind of lost at some point. And and he's a he's a business developer sort of, so not very technical. And I hate business, and I am very technical. I hate paperology and that kind of stuff. Um, so we were kind of disconnected because I just didn't want to explain details. As a as a geek, I would say, yeah, you wouldn't understand it anyway. So leave me alone. I'll just <coughs> type some code and be happy, and there will be rainbows and unicorns. But <laughs> the problem was 
the problem was uh, that our product was stalled at some point and it didn't move. Uh, well, it didn't move at all. Um, so what we did, uh, we, we acknowledged the problem and we asked one of our investors what to do and he said, well, find, find somebody that can teach you one of the agile techniques of, of, of development. Um, and we really find some, some, some guy and he taught us Scrum. So in short, uh, don't want to make a full presentation of it. Um, Scrum is basically, you know what Kanban is, who knows what Kanban is? Okay, cool. For the rest of you that don't, Kanban is, I think it was invented by Toyota, not sure. Um, so basically it's a set, set of, uh, I don't have a slide for it, it's a set of columns and you have just posted um, like three columns to do, doing and done and you have post-its and you just say, I interview the client, you put it on to do and when you're actually interviewing them you do it in, in doing and when you're done you put it in done. Basically it's a flow of, flow of tasks so each, each, uh, each post-it represents a task and you just move those tasks. Uh, of course you can have more columns as in waiting for, as in with coding you, you obviously need more columns like waiting for review, waiting for tests, waiting for feedback, so there's more columns. Uh, but it really helps to organize it. Uh, the, ne the next thing we do is also 14-day uh, sprints. Uh, basically a sprint is just, just um, some fixed amount of time that you set out to build a particular uh, functionality, a feature or a set of features that kind of make a story. Um, we also, yeah, and what is a story? Basically what we do, a story is um, a piece of functionality that one person can do in one day. So in the morning when we gather, we basically take each, each, it takes one story and tries to finish it in a day. Maybe a story is create a form or design a form for that matter or move, to, move a server to one location. So it's, it's very, really diverse. It's not just development or design. Um, and of course we also have daily meetings. I can't stress if you have, if you have um, uh, a team, I can't stress how important it is to have daily 15 minute meeting. Uh, where everybody just reports what they have done a day before, two minutes, and two minutes what they are planning to do the, the current day. It works wonders because what, what happens is that um, peer pressure comes in. I mean, if you are a team of five developers and you, well, you really can't bullshit one another. I mean, if you said, I did this yesterday, everybody will know whether you really did it. So. You kind of owe it to yourself and to the team, and it's like everybody pushing each other up, sort of. Um, and then um, the Scrum also comprised of roles. I won't go into in, into much details. Um, I've also written blog posts about one person Scrum. So even if you're alone, you can actually do this uh, with your with your client. Uh, and if you try to do this with your client, I guarantee you uh, you'll be more productive. And all the clients, I mean, they are quite, quite you know, control freaks, aren't they? Um, so by doing this, you're, you're just feeding the freak inside them um, to be happy, you know, with progress, sort of. Um, so yeah, um, that I, I, how much time do I get? I mean, am I long? Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Um, so um, to recap, um, my today's the, the lessons from my today's talk, I would say. Increase your prices, uh, don't compete on those. People would always ask me, uh, I used to work on Elance, you know Elance, right? And I was the most expensive guy on Elance in my niche. Um, and they would always ask me, how do you, I mean, how can you compete with all the guys from, from I don't know, India, Pakistan that have really le like this low rates, sorry. Um, so yeah, the, how can you compete with them? And I, I always said, I don't. I'm the most expensive guy, you know, I would, ju I would just look at, at the prices and I would bid the highest. And what happened uh, is that the clients that said no is, were okay. I mean, they wanted some cheap, cheap stuff done and that was okay. But the clients that I actually did lend were good clients, paying me good money. They understood that, that I wouldn't miss, well, I would try hard not to miss deadlines. Uh, uh, my solutions were, were kind of given a lot of thought in and, and yeah, they were happy with me and I had long, long lasting relationships with many of them. Uh, so yeah, don't compete on prices, compete on your skills. Um, second, kill your ego because it kills relationships. 
um, ego and business. Uh, unfortunately, especially in tech sector, which is quite uh, male dominated, I would say ego can be a problem. Um, yeah, let's try not to make it a problem. So remove your ego. Um, empathy and acceptance, of course, uh, accept each other. Um, clearly define the scopes of work, draw, always draw, really, this will save your life, almost. Um, have a partner or an employee if you're afraid of having an employee. Um, don't point fingers, learn from what's going wrong. Uh, also learn to let go, do one of the agile techniques. And at the end of the day, it's hard to admit to ourselves because we really love what we do, uh, but it's still just a job. Um, don't throw stones at me right now, but it is still a job. Uh, so we do it so we can live, not the other way around. Thank you. <laughs> did, I say, did I say this right? Yeah, okay, thank you. That was very well done, thank you. Buy a donkey means thank you very much. Ah, okay. Buy a donkey, it sounds like buy a donkey, which <laughs> you would say like to a farmer or something, that's kind of weird, I don't know why. Okay, okay. But, yeah. I, have, I have just one, one request from your audience. Yes. Can you all please raise your hand so I take this picture from my wife because she wouldn't believe me I'm speaking to this big crowd. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I want a huge round of applause for Tamash Saman. Uh, any of you guys uh, have any questions you'd like to ask Tamash? Uh, yeah, I was actually it fixed itself um, to some degree, <laughs> um, and that is because I would I would have too many clients. That that was the fact. I just I just uh, as you've seen, I have a big family which I needed to provide for. So when I left the job, I was just like, you you can give me a job. Yeah, give it to me. I would just accept everything, and then I was swamped with work, and I couldn't I couldn't really work on it all. So when I was late con constantly, the clients actually some of them actually fired me. And then I was just left with enough work that I could actually complete. Sorry? I actually thought you were referring to Codable specifically. Uh, no. You guys started a while ago and it started off slow and uh, it was like persistence and then suddenly you guys stuck around and that was really cool. I actually started using you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, um, so what's the question? Uh, <laughs> Were there problems with Codable in the beginning? Uh, no, actually, um, there were not uh, because long, well, long, uh, half a year before we launched Codable, I actually reached out to, to Eddie, um, the, the previous Wood Teams guy, um, and he was very um, supportive of our cause. Um, and yeah, I asked him whether, well, he was very supportive in giving us enough information that we needed, whether it makes sense to build a, a two-sided support marketplace in, in a sense. And when we launched, um, yeah, well, he, expre he expressed that, yeah, they do in fact have a lot of um, request support, but by, by request, I mean the paid part of support. So when you buy a team and need to customize it for money, of course, um, that they have a lot, a lot of inquiries for that, but they don't handle it. Well, it was um, that that was were his words, and I reached out to several others. And when when I saw there is a market opportunity, um, I just we just launched. I mean, we we tried to fundraise and then we failed a bit, and then we launched and then fundraised and succeeded. So was a lot of the success of uh, Codable based on the referrals via Wikipedia? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it's, it still is actually, so I'm super grateful and for that. And percentage-wise of, of Codable from via Lucy? I mean, would you say it's 50%? Yeah, roughly half right now, I would say. Wow. Mm. And from, from the beginning, was it that? or was? It no, no, no. Yeah. At the beginning, it was pretty much 100%. Wow. Yeah, okay. Because we were, we were uh, I'm not myself, I'm not a very known person in w WordPress. I'm a nobody, really. Uh, so so um, it was really high, hard starting out to get any traction um, because because... 
yeah, you need you need a celebrity basically to to a acknowledge you to get at least some trust from the people. So that trust for us, that golden coin um, was was Wood Teams. I, I think I remember in the beginning you guys kind of were a, an all round uh, shop for for outsourcing, and I think recently you started branding yourself as. Uh, WordPress. No, no. We started out with WordPress. No, no, but I think within your own codable branding or within some of the, the language that you have on your own website, yeah. it used to be more generic. Yeah. And now you've actually said we, we focus more mostly on, I think that's a good thing. That's because we're a bunch of geeks not good at expressing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly, truly, I, I promise that's the truth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Thanks, Nick. I was just wondering, have, had you ever tried uh, billing a client not per hour, or like what is your billing philosophy? Have you ever tried billing a client on what they think it's worth to them and their business, yeah. and not per hour? Yeah, it, it's, it's really hard to put that mentality into developers' minds. We, we actually, um, Codable, I would say part of success of Codable is that we have a really strict guidelines for all our developers. Um, how to behave, how to estimate, uh, what to do, what not to do, obviously. And it's, it's really hard because they all think in terms of hourly rates. We are trying to, actually, if you've seen our guidelines, we do have, do not build by the hour. If you have to build on a timely scale, build daily or weekly, or, or better yet, build on the value you provide to the client. Not, I mean, you can only, I mean, billing hours is not scalable, you know. You can only build so much and that's pretty much it. You can't clone yourself. Uh, so, yeah, um, we are trying to, but it's, it's hard. If, if you're, I mean, as a freelancer, it, it, if all that you're used to is billing by the hour, then the shift in this mentality is really hard to achieve. Yeah, and it's an, on, and it's an ongoing struggle. Ooh, great question, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. <coughs> Um, a lot of your advice seems to come from personal experience. Um, do, do you know of any resources or reading material that follows the philosophies or the advice that you've given that one can read more about? Um, I'll definitely check out your blog and stuff. Uh -huh. Okay, well, yeah, I, I guess I ought to re re uh, write the book now. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I don't have any, I mean, I do blog from time to time, but uh, like the time to time is really far apart, actually, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't, I mean, all of this, all of this is my personal stuff, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good idea. I can make some money on the side on a, with a book, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll put some thought into it. Sorry. <laughs> Any more questions? Cool. No. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big round of applause for tonight's announcement.